I'm John Foster. Join me for a behind the scenes look at Ventura County Archaeology. Today we'll look at the second part of Julie's narration on her use of traditional tools and methods to utilize acorns. Right a little long, I'd singe it uh, probably about right here because we always love to wear our bangs. And then you have that burnt hair smell. You take an acorn meat, grind it up into a paste, rub it on your hair and into your scalp. It conditioned the scalp and took away that burnt smell. So every part was used multiple ways. So I'll keep it down here. So you can see, oh, I'm not gonna be able to do it. But the idea is to get the ring on the pin. It takes a lot of practice. And when I used to do the analogy of a Game Boy that this was level one, nobody knows what Game Boys are anymore. There were 16 rings on this rope or this cord that you'd have to get as many. And when you could do that and have that good eye and hand coordination, you were ready to get out there and, and hunt. I always say, does the deer just stand there? No, of course not, it runs. Another game that was played with a nut itself was just everybody had dreidels. So you put a little hole at the top of your acorn and you spin, 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 just like a little top. It's hours of fun for a little child. Just the simplicity of, of the other parts of the acorn itself. So I'm back in my kitchen, because that's what I'll do. I'll pour my water into my flour and my bowl at my counter. I go, I go pick up the kids from school. Maybe I'll do some shopping, I'll come back and I'll pour, I'll just take that water and gently pour off the water and then I'll pull back, not letting losing any of the flour. Set it back on my counter, pour more water in there and let it set for another hour or two. To get about six cups of flour, it takes pretty much all day if you're just doing it that way and letting the, the um, tannic acid leach up out of the acorns. I've actually acquired a taste. That's the only taste that's left in the acorn flour. And again, it's beneficial for the body. So if you can tolerate a certain amount of bitterness, you're ready because the cooking will further uh, the heat from your ovens and putting them in the, in the oven and baking pies, cakes, tortillas, pancakes, whatever you want. You can substitute the flour for anything that you, it'll leach out the rest of the way during that heating process in the oven. So don't, don't let that uh, bother you too much. If you can tolerate some of that bitterness, the better you off. The Japanese people make an acorn noodle where they don't leach the acorn flour at all because it is that antioxidant property in there. Uh, ancient stories that I talked about Egypt in, in the Nordic traditions, uh, Thor hid under an oak tree to save himself from lightning. From those stories and those teachings, people put acorns in their windowsill to protect their homes from lightning strikes. You'll see finials on the draw curtains or on the bedpost of acorns. So those traditions uh, in those cultures carry on. We all have stories of acorns in all indigenous parts around the world. And uh, some acorns are sweeter than others on the East Coast. They're the little chubby ones that are, that are sweet. You don't have to leach them at all. You just cook them up. So as I'm talking about all the practicality and the, and the amazing things that you can do with the acorn and the beauty of our oak trees, just in the pure stance of them and their, their to come into this magnificent, beautiful, beautiful ancient tree out of just this little tiny acorn is just magnificent. So we can, you know, size is unimportant, you know, in the very beginning, it's what we do with what we learn along the way. We saw the food abilities, we saw the games, we heard some stories about our ancient oak. We, I haven't, I, I did mention earlier about how the oaks are the children of the moon and how as the acorn is the whole food, the entire tree, not only does the acorn nourish your body and sustain you, we walked everywhere. So we needed that, just like eating a big bowl of oatmeal every morning, you know, just takes you throughout the whole morning and into your next meal. Uh, it, the sp spirit of the oak tree, being a child of the moon, the moon is one, a feminine deity, who honors uh, the night sky, gives her brilliance, and has, goes through her phases. And as she has given that same property to her children, the oak tree, we have in our culture what we call Atishwins, spirit helpers, dream helpers, spirit guides. 
and in the rituals that were done to find who your Atrishuan is, it can be many things. It can be animals, it can be the oak tree, it can be a deceased relative. And each of these animals, these people will come with different virtues. The oak tree can be a person's Atrishuan in which where you are connected to one of these people, these rooted people. And that's your power place. That's your prayer place. That's where you can deliver all your troubles. You can ask for quest uh, answers to questions of which would come in the dream time. So you look at these trees as those um, people who will absorb and will listen. And you finally, you can find your oak tree sometimes. And I, I talk about those. We've all experienced this. We're walking in the woods and makes you do a double take because there's a light that just lit up from that tree and it spoke to you. Uh, people will often, if their Atishwin is an animal, they'll carve it out of a soft stone, a steatite or soapstone that was a trade item from um, the island of what we call today Catalina. And those, those Atishwins would be buried in a place possibly most near the, um, the oaks. And, and so it was not only fed your body, it fed your spirit. It fed your, your emotional part of us that we as humans need to have a place to purge uh, those, those type of emotions. So it'll take it. It'll take it and the water will take it also. So um, as we move into this new, uh, we've been in an involution for so long. We're just all about ourselves and our entitlement. We need to get back to the evolution of time and, and, and learn about what is beneficial here for us and everything that we have, especially in this valley, the old story, the old movie Shangri-La, we still can consider this valley a Shangri-La. We have, in, in our county basically too, we still have many of our animals, we still have many of our plants that we can plant them in your yard. Do not go out and gather. This is a really important thing for me because we're greedy as humans and we have to remember that one of the reasons why I made that offering to this tree is because there's animals that are here. We've scared the birds away. We've scared the kitty cats that live over here and rest underneath the tree. There's also little bugs and other things that live around here. So when people go out into the wilderness and, and they look for all the native plants, they're taking them out by the roots. They're being dismissive of all the other animals that have nested in them and hide in them and, and have their own shade protections. So by putting them in your yard, you're saving water. You're seeing California and its seasons because we right now we are having the seasons. We have the Toyon, we have the Ceanothus, uh, wild lilac growing and blooming right now. We have our miner's lettuce. We have um, the elderberries starting to bloom. So we have color. And once you put those in your yard, you'll have a season of uh, fruits and, and soap and um, nutrition with vitamin C, with the miner's lettuce. There's a whole array of food that you can grow in your very own backyard. And if you don't have a backyard big enough, start a community garden. Ojai has several community gardens here and our schools are now putting in community gardens to teach the children. If we don't protect them, how can we protect this world if we don't know what it's, what's in it and how to sustain it and learn the, all the different wonderful things that have come for the thousands of years that we as native Chumash people have honored and sung to. That's another thing is coming out into the world as native peoples. We've sang back to the world. We've honored it. We've introduced ourselves back to it. We've gifted that. We've gifted the world in all of its beings and, and its spirit here. And it hasn't seen that in over 200 years. When was the last time you sang to your trees and to your animals and gifted the water before getting in or taking a drink? So we want to bring that spirit back to this world. If we don't find that spirit within us, uh, we will be in big trouble. So I want to thank you. Good luck. I made a coffee cake out of my acorn flour and you can put spices in them. You don't have to eat it. We ate it. I, I didn't mention. We didn't bake. We made a soup. That was very important. I should have started at the beginning. But we would mix it in water. Again, putting the acorn flour in a basket. Add your water into your basket with your acorn meal into a thin soup but then you would put hot rocks into your basket and stir and stir and stir. You don't want to burn a hole into your basket. You can do this on a stove on a very light simmer and it'll start thickening up. And we ate this as a gruel, usually with our fingers or maybe a mussel shell as a spoon. And that's how we ate our, our acorn soup in that manner. 
in a very, uh, sometimes we might mix it, but we ate it for every single meal during this time. If like a year, like last year, we'd have acorns to last us all the way into the next season, into the fall, if we prepared right. We crack them open, we put them in a tripod, large willow basket that sits up off the ground, lined with white sage, because the white sage was an insecticide and kept your bugs out of your acorns. And then people would come and stir it, and you'd only take out what you need. So, um, you know, repeating all of this, you can also go on the websites and, and plug in Native American acorn processing, our recipes, and, and you'll find a lot of information. A lot of people are getting back, a lot of nations are going back to their ancient way and, and eating and this paleo diets and all these things. And where we shouldn't be having berries all year, there's things we're doing to our bodies that we need to start doing locavore, seasonal, and for our body types and blood. So I, I encourage you to invest in this. You'll have loads of fun. Your kids will have loads of fun playing when doing all these different things. And we ask Creator to watch all over all of us in this time of uh, exploration. So woyo, woyo, kiwanan. Thank you. Goodbye for now. I want to take a moment to talk about the continuing use of traditional tools and methods by the Chumash and other indigenous peoples. In this case, a stone bowl, pestle, baskets, and grinding stone were used to process acorns into flour. Why is this important? You can use a food processor in less time than I can say these words and have the same result. But would you really have the same result? What is missing here is that food gathering and processing is a communal effort starting with acquiring the stones, modifying them into stone tools, the harvesting of the acorns, and their processing. This was all done by groups where knowledge and result was shared and bonds made and families created. Today, food gathering and processing is removed from a group to a single person, and all the processes are compartmentalized and sterile. A poignant moment is when Julie thanked the oak tree in the first episode for providing food for her people for thousands of years. Indigenous knowledge is handed down through the generations by practice and teaching about the interactions of living beings, including people, with one another and with their own environment. Foods contribute to health beyond nutritional value. Gathering foods maintain cultural connections through storytelling, ceremonies, harvesting, and processing and sharing resources, provides outdoor activity, and helps to build and maintain interpersonal relationships and community traditions. And this is what I call the soul of a culture. In these two videos, you can see firsthand how food sources were once part of a larger cultural, political, and biological system where environment and culture overlap. Using these traditional tools in a traditional way can help bring back a different perspective on how we look at our relationship with the world around us and gives back to the Chumash some of their unique identity. Thank you for your attention.